Hey, what's up, y'all? And uh, let me make sure that, yep, we are live on on the other channels, which is good. Let me check YouTube, make sure that everything is going on. YouTube, check the Instagram. Uh, you know, make sure that I am indeed live on YouTube, because you know, it's 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 a challenge. Right. Oh yeah, there I go. I'm, I'm live on. I'm on YouTube as well, so let me right click on that, copy, go to Twitter, tweet it out if I haven't tweeted it out already. Control V, space, with at sign El Guapo Comics, and tweet. Boom, done deal. Let me, uh, oh. Full Metal Jacket Black Bear just followed. That's awesome. Let me see if I can pop out the chat. Boom. Yeah, that's something I need to do so I can keep tag of what's going on. All right. That, hey, I think I think we are cooking with Crisco now. Oh, nice. So now all we're doing is uh, chilling and waiting to see what's going to happen. Chilling and waiting. Yeah, that's what I do. You know, I, I, I go on regardless. Seven o'clock. You know, I've been kind of slacking lately, but, you know, I, I, I'm going to get back on the schedule, get back on schedule. You know, my trusty sidekick is uh, is, is watching us be a D-Live and drop the back at Skunk Girl uh, emoji uh, sticker, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, so Skunk Girl is shipping now. And <laughs> as y'all saw earlier, um, Earthworm Jim shipped out. Yeah, and it came out in a really nice package, very professional. Like he, he gives extra, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like the way he does it. And uh, he, I caught a little bit of his stream earlier today, and he was like, you know, you you guys that keep backing me are driving the market. You know, if if y'all keep uh keep backing, you know, I'm gonna keep making books. But <laughs> the thing is, the, the the type of work that he delivers, man, that's crazy. You know what? And the thing is, I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to back it, and I kept saying, oh, "I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it." And then it was over. Yeah. You know, it's just I hate when that happens. You know. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely um, definitely a good book. I mean, I haven't read it yet. I'm definitely gonna read it. Uh, I just got around. I did the unboxing, then I started cooking and getting everything together. Um, you know, and, and <clears throat> but and then of course I got the interrogation about the new comic book that came in by the wife. Like, oh, I see you got uh -huh. a comic book. Yeah, this was from a long time ago, honey. This is before I started saving all my money. <laughs> right, right. You know, you know the drill. You know the drill. Uh she knows, she knows, you know. It's like I tell her, I said, look, babe, you know, I, I don't. No, but her thing is this, you know, um, she hears me, she hears me talk about non-delivering, non-fulfilling people. And then, you know, she's like, look, but she, um, but I just like to kind of explain it. This, this is one of the few people that actually fulfills yeah. and delivers. So, you know. And the and the quality of the book is amazing. So does she get I, that? Uh -huh. Does she get that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, I, that's not that's not. But you know, everybody has values systems that are different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm a tech dude, and I'm a, I'm a geek. So you know, comic books, computers, cell phones, smart watches. You know that drive that. You know, I, I get into all of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. She's more of a clothes and design and fashion, you know. Yeah. Like uh, I could back, uh, I back about six or seven books with the purses that I buy her easily, you know. There's no complaints about the purses, though, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it it is what it is because people value different things. You know what I mean? So for me to ask her to understand that is it's hard, you know. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard, and it's kind of unfair because it's not something that she puts value in. Right, right. 
Does that make any sense? No, I know exactly what you're saying. You know, well, I feel who's that. this? Who's this stranger that just joined in? Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's El Crustio. How's it going, you guys? What's up, El well, man? Doing I, well, brother. I uh, enjoyed your unboxing video. Eve. It was a, it was an impromptu video. I yeah. was I, like, I had my cell phone <laughs> in one hand. On the other hand, I was trying to unbox the dumb, stupid thing, you know? Yeah. But, uh, it, it was definitely not what I would call the most professional unboxing video. But it's a it definitely ca but it captured the emotion of yeah. receiving it, I think. I hope. That's what you that's all you need, brother. You know, I, I don't like look, all, all I need this video to do is capture how excited I am about receiving a quality product from that I backed and got on time. It was delivered, it was fulfilled, and it exceeded expectations. This is what I'm talking about right here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted. It wasn't no big deal, you know, but but I was all shaky and jittery because I have a, you know, like I said, uh, I had the cell phone on one hand and trying to open everything up with the other hand. And it was a funny video. I kind of enjoyed it myself after I watched it. But I knew it was going to be funny, you know. But the thing is, you know, I, I, I can never get mad at Dog to Naple, man. It's like no matter what he does. He always exceeds expectations. Now, one day, I'm going to be spoiled, right? <laughs> and Because mm -hmm. he's setting a standard now that's very high. And and that one time he doesn't, you know, meet this kind of standard, then people are going to be mad at him. It'll be unjustified, of course, you know, but it's the standard that he set. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think he realizes that, to be honest with you. Do you think he realizes it? Absolutely, because if you've seen, do you ever see watch any of his like where he's just randomly just ranting? Mm -hmm. And you know he talks a lot about that. You know about quality, and you know he's always talking about how he can do things better. The guy really understands the whole packaging of product and. You know, being in the uh, uh, animation industry really um, taught him a lot about presentation. Right. You know? And so that's carried that carries over into how he's been doing these campaigns. And I think um, I've seen the Bigfoot Bill, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really good looking. Okay. It is. And and then you know to see he said he was going to do this campaign bigger and better, you know, and especially since it's it's, I mean, Bigfoot Bill was his thing, but Earthwind Jim is really what kind of put him out, you know. Yeah, put him on the map. And so you knew that with that that in mind that he was going to do the best that the best that he could, and he said he was. And from based upon what what you showed us today, that's exactly what he did. Yeah, he did a really good job. That box alone, man. I mean, I'm feeling bad about throwing the box away. Why would you throw it away? Should have just kept it. I don't have no room for it. Where the hell am I put it at? Uh, put it in your bookcase, <laughs> just like that in that box. Just put it in that box. It 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 has man. No, I have nowhere to put that at. Nowhere. Oh man. Nowhere. Like. Honestly, if I could have kept it, I would have, but I have no place. None whatsoever. My little bookshelf is already almost full. My clock, man, look. I, I got to do some serious soul searching about stuff. <laughs> but it, it, it did. It, it's, it, it's breaking my heart to know that I had to throw that box away because it was so beautiful. You know, and I, I didn't know what it, and the funny thing is, like, I, I opened the door because the stupid UPS people don't ring the bell. So I'm constantly checking the door because, you know, we got porch pirates and people always stealing stuff off your porches here. And uh, and I see that box. I'm like, man, what the heck is this box? Right. And I read, it says, oh, fulfillment. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then I realized what it was because I started looking at the drawings on the box. And I was like, what in the world? That is pretty hot. 
and that and that that's that's good when you can create that kind of excitement for your customers you know like Manny's creating a lot of a lot of buzz with uh, Skunk Girl is 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 uh, being uh, fulfilled and people are getting it, and uh, a lot of people, you know, they're well, you know, I say a lot of people, but relatively speaking, there's a lot of people because I'm gonna use that word anyway, you know, on Twitter and whatnot, Facebook talking about it. So I haven't heard any negative comments. You know? Yeah, I keep I keep checking the door, checking every day, asking my. My wife, my son, did I get anything today? Did I get it? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Manny said we were gonna be the last ones. Yeah. And and I can and I can I can I'm not upset about that, you know. No, 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 not at all. You know, because we definitely wanted him to be able to get it to everybody, you know. And uh me me being me waiting a little longer for someone else, you know, just to ensure that all the other people got it, I ain't even gonna be mad about that one. No, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man. So it's it's exciting news, you know. And, and I definitely can't wait it. Can't wait to get it. A lot of the people in the community are super excited, of course, because you know that of that uh, wraparound cover. Yes. That had a lot of the people from the community on it. So, you know, you can't get mad at that. So that's that, you know, but that's excitement, you know, it's good because it's a good time of the year to get it. You know, we're about hitting Christmas time. People are getting some of the some of the good books and whatnot, you know. So I there's not no no upsetting, no reason to be mad. Oh shoot. All right, so I popped out the wrong chat. So everybody's on the let me pop out the YouTube chat. And all you right. Comments or something? It, so somehow my uh, I'm streaming in three different platforms, but for some reason my um, restream chat is not picking up everything. And there's people on YouTube, and I didn't even realize they were on YouTube talking. So we got a kind of local sports. Okay, kind of local says first thumbs up. Seven for you. Late as heck for me. <laughs> How about the time zone difference? Right. Uh, let's see. And then. Uh, yeah. Oh God. That was no one day was work. It wasn't working. It needs a new version. Oh, that's why. All right. So there you go. So Trusty's in the house. Maranya's in the house. Nighthawk Warriors in the house. Hello to everybody. I apologize. I didn't realize uh, that my restream was not working. So uh, with that being said, now I'm going to reboot that. Hopefully I can see all the chats in one application instead of having three windows open. <laughs> Oh my lord. That's what happens when you try to do too much. Try to be too fancy. Right. Too fancy. But well, I gotta tell you, I I love that we've got the skunk girl sticker now for D Live. Uh, I know, I know. I've I've used it in a couple of channels, believe it or not. That's so nice of Kuya to take that and and you know, uh, make it into a sticker for us and, and use it. You know, I got him to use it one night when I was uh on vacation down in Roanoke. I was sitting, I was actually sitting in the hall in the hotel uh, mm-hmm. drawing because I couldn't draw in the room because my wife was trying to sleep and my boys were doing homework. Right. I, I kind of look at this. Where's the warm at? Doug to Naples, Air Force Gym. Man, that dude is, uh, that dude got his own channel. That dude is like super famous. <laughs> but uh, I'm not doing any of that today. That book is done. Done, done, done. Yeah. So but, um, did you guys, have you seen any of the trailers that have dropped recently, the Ghostbusters or the Wonder Woman? You know what? I saw um, I saw them published, but I did not wa- actually sit down and watch them. Um, but, yeah, I've seen that uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's supposed to be coming out. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So that, I think they they did a brilliant job with that, with especially bringing that kid from Stranger Things on. Uh, I thought that was pretty good to cast him in the movie, you know. And then Is that actually that kid? That's the kid from Stranger Things. See, I haven't watched Stranger Things, so yeah, that's know. the kid. He's popular. Like people, 
they look at him, they know who that is, and they know that he's in these creepy things. So it's like a nice, um, it's like a, a a nice tie together for people in their mind, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. This is retro. They're bringing back the retro thing, kind of thing. It's modern, but it's also you know, so there's that linkage there. And then Paul Rudd, he's very pop. People like him. He's very likable. Yep. I, mean, I, I don't think I've seen any movie where I didn't like like him in it. You know, the movie may not have been great, but I, I've always liked him in it. And then the um the kid with the glasses, I'm not sure. Like he kind of reminds me of um, gosh, why am I drawing a, a blank on the guy from the original Ghostbusters? Um Rick Moranis? No, no, no. The other guy with the glasses, the tall, skinny guy. Egon, you mean um Harold Ramis? Yes, yes, Harold Ramis, right. Okay. So and then uh how they're kind of, the impression he's supposed to be his grandson. Something like that. Yeah, it's something like that. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I think it'll do well. And I'm glad that they went that way because to me, that makes more sense than that other thing that they put out that was had a name of Ghostbusters next to it that we won't talk too much about in a bad way. <laughs> um, um, when and I watched that, you watch, did you watch that? You guys watched that, right? Uh, only you did. El Segundo. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. I, I don't think anybody else did. Lydia Gang uh, saying hello. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I was like, uh, if you're talking about the reboot from like what 2016 or whatever it was uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, just I'm trying to be nice right here. I'm trying to be very um <laughs> look, man. You mean the one with uh with Thor in it. Uh, what's his name? Hensport? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he was yeah, he was in it. He was the secretary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean, according in. according to the video to the to the um trailers that I saw, he was the secretary. So they completely inverted it. Yeah. Uh for no real reason, really. Yeah, than, all because El Guapo asked them to. All, be, all because, just because. <laughs> I, I don't think they should ever do something just because. You know? They did it because El Guapo told them to. Oh, they said, hey. I would never say that. It's like, hey, El Guapo said, hey, you know what? Would it be a great idea? And they're like, what's up, El Guapo? And it was like, if you just completely flipped it inside out. Yeah, but I thought we were going to be getting like, um, like J Lo, Selma Hayek, you know. <laughs> no, that would have been something. Um, like that, you know. <laughs> That's not like where they went with that. <laughs> like I think that would have worked if they had J Lo, Selma Hayek, um, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, and. Oh my God. Uh, and like Blake Lively or something like that. <laughs> now you now you're asking for way too much. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, we're talking, right? Yeah. As, as long as we we have a wish list, can we please get the following people? <laughs> hey, look, I, that's what I, I asked for. That's not what I got. Look, that's not what you know. I didn't watch it to be honest with you. Um, I I. I I couldn't tell you, man, to be honest with you, you know. <laughs> Lydia Gaming says, KG, check me out. So Lydia Game is in the chat, chilling. People are coming in. Don't mind us. You know, some of us uh, didn't watch certain movies, and now we're being crucified for it by those that did. Freaking El Guapo. Sorry about that. I didn't watch The Explorer, though. I haven't watched that either. It's a good movie for the kids. You know, well, you know, I I'm, so I, I put myself through. I tore. I put myself through that torture to see if it would be acceptable for my kids. And it uh, is that what it was, man? You you are a, you are a great father, taking the bullet on that like that. Take a bullet for my kids, so it's like, all right, they can watch. There's nothing wrong here. It's, it was a fairly positive movie, if not 
Right. Uh, listen, the best thing about that movie that I can appreciate is that they knew who their target audience was and they mm -hmm. shot right for that. And I think that they hit the target in the type of movie that they got. All right. So. Well, as long as they did all that and made a guapo happy, I'm good, man. All right. I'm but good. did they have the monkey in the red boots? That's all I want to know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say yes. And they also had Swiper. <laughs> they had Swiper? Dude, I was dying. I was like, oh. Trusty got a little too excited about that. <laughs> I can't believe they actually put this thing in this movie. Dude, <laughs> that's part of it. I'm not giving anything away here. Right at the beginning of the movie, <laughs> there was this disclaimer by the, the Association of Foxes or something like that. And it says something like, uh, we members of the Fox, United Foxes, are, want to categorically deny the fact that we are swipers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Pablo Romero's in the house. And everybody's saying hello to Pablo. Pablo. The man, the myth, the legend. Pablo, do not redesign Dora, okay? Don't do it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Not, yeah, not yeah, done deal. Now. I'm gonna have to say that in off limits, Pablo. <laughs> it's a done deal now. That would be the next thing Pablo's working on. Oh my gosh, please now, nah, no Pablo. Pablo's gonna be like Dora <laughs> is man, you can do something else. But don't do don't do poor little Dora. That's it. Now y'all now y'all done put that seed in Pablo's mind. <laughs> I mean, if he wants to do like like Lucy from the, the peanuts. You know, he could probably do like all the peanuts females, you know. You know, that that that's it. Y'all don't put it in his mind. Pablo's Pablo, peanuts. <laughs> he's Pablo like, is a, he's logging off right now in about an hour and a half. He'll have something posted up on Twitter. That's right. <laughs> and then everybody will go insane over it. <laughs> See, Pablo says, Dora? Question mark. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Muy interesante. Muy interesante. Muy interesante. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we had a good combo today. Man, look. So like Red 10, right? It's it's the Kickstarter's closed, right? Mm -hmm. And the colorist is working on the colors on it, right? Yeah. Oh boy, I tell you what, I cannot wait to get that one. I'm going to it as well. He's a talented guy, but you know. But he's a diva. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> not my words. Not my words. <laughs> Those are not my words. If he, does, if he does great work. Yes. <laughs> It'll be worth it, though. I mean, if you've seen any of the color pages that I have put up, you'll know that the guy's a very good colorist. Yeah, no. Nah. All I all I all I want is to finish out the story, right? And uh, finish out the story, and then have have them. At, of course, I'm getting another hard cover because uh, the first one I got is hard cover. So yeah, you gotta you know, finish. Right. I gotta I gotta bookend it. I gotta make it look spiffy. It's gotta be two hard covers. I can't have a floppy and a hard cover. That make no sense. Mm -mm. I, I hate it when I have to do that. You know, when I would go to shows and digging through the boxes, you know, and I found something I want and I got hard cover, hard cover, hard cover. And then all I can find is floppy. It's just, oh, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. It does. It, it takes away from like being an authentic set. If that makes, yes. if the, if the, you know, if that makes any sense to anybody. No, I know. It's like jury rigging, you know. Yeah, you know, look, mm -hmm. hey, look, I got a hard cover, and then you got a trade paper back sock cover. What, like, what happened there? I don't know. I don't know what happened. Don't judge me, man. I just needed to get the story. I need to get my fix, man. You got any more of that red tin? You got some of that red tin going around? But, but the creators, man, they were just, they were just being mean. They sold me a little bit of red tin and then left me hanging. Yeah, well. Tell you, man, them doggone creators. Them doggone creators. Masters, 
Nasser's uh, uh, video that he did of an unboxing of Le Fay. Oh, who? No, I don't watch much of uh, Nasser stuff. No, I'm just saying he does. He does this unboxing, right? And the the whole time he's doing the unboxing, he's talking about, look at this. This book raised eight hundred dollars on Indiegogo. Look at the quality. They said they were going to ship it in December, and here it is December, and I have it in my hands. There are campaigns that have raised thousands, nay, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands that still have not shipped their books. And that the book that you get is nowhere near the quality of these people that just did an $800 campaign. And then he started mentioning a few other campaigns that they didn't raise a, a boatload of money, a few hundred here, maybe a thousand to 2000. And they're fulfilling campaigns. They're putting out good books. And, uh, uh, and he was throwing shade without saying names. Right. So hard. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> Freaking hilarious. But well, you uh, know, he brought us, I, I did, Hey, listen, he brought us. I can't. I can't argue with the guy on the points that he was making. That's for sure. No, he he does he does bring some good points. And on, at the same token, man, you know he he did he did receive a lot of flack. You know, whether it was warranted or unwarranted. Um, you know, but apparently now he's back to making comics. I don't know. Did you see? Yeah, you must have seen the um the drawings that um. Jiminy Cricket that Jason Robinson did. Yeah, because he put it he puts it on our chat. Right. So I, I have to assume that he's back to making comics. I know he was he he was doing books. I know he kind of soured on the comics a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. of all the stuff that happened to him. And I don't like horror comics anyway. That Red Ten might be the the exception to policy. Because it's not really horror, horror. It's like More Superman. It's, it's, it's a suspense, right? It's yeah. a thriller. It's a thriller. Anyway, <clears throat> I digress. <laughs> Man, I remember when that video debuted. I was in college, and our, we had a media room in the campus center with the TV. That room was packed. You couldn't have fit another person in there, all waiting for that uh, debut of that video. Yeah, so... So I don't know. What would you classify Red Ten there, Mister Red Ten guy? Um, I would say it's a suspense. I mean, it's, it pushes the, the the envelope a little bit. I, I'm not gonna say it takes it to the level of the boys, but in the scenes, let's put it this way: it's not gratuitous. Like yeah, that, in the boys, it just seemed like every page had something just insane on it, and almost kind of made a joke of it. And Invincible. Was kind of like that that same way after you know like the first twenty issues or so it started to really get a little bit crazy with that, yeah. um, but I mean we, but and Invincible was great I mean I I love the, the whole series, so the Red Ten I would say it is um, a superhero murder mystery, uh, it's just it's smart but you know when things need to to get ramped up they do. You know, we don't kind of we try not to we try not to sugarcoat certain realities, you know, um, like they like to do the comics. And the whole basis of the whole concept was, you know, superheroes die and then they come back. So we created a team based loosely on all these analogs from Marvel and DC. Mm -hmm. And when we killed them, they we made sure that they weren't coming back. OK. Yeah. There's no way they were coming back. So um, yeah, that that Green Lantern knockoff dude. Uh, <laughs> that was like, dude. I love drawing that issue. That love dude, it. the way he died, you, he's dead, dead. Yeah, for he, sure. Nope, <laughs> you're right. He's never coming back. Right. That dude, that was horrific. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, I was I tried to portray it. Not in a gory way. It was like, all right, so he's falling from space, right? Mm -hmm. So 
what happens when something enters the atmosphere from out of space? It burns up. <laughs> That's how I depicted it. I was like, all right, well, here we got this guy. He no longer has his <laughs> green lantern belt or his, or what's called the Orion belt. Uh, and uh, he's just plumbing into Earth. So obviously, so, he's just going to become Cinder. So uh, it was a lot of fun drawing the flesh burning and also peeling away and burning and ash burning away as he was entering. I had a lot of fun doing that because a lot of neat textures and stuff that that uh, I got to play with. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. That one and then and the fish lady, uh, Aqua Girl or Aqua Aqua. Aqua, Aqua, Aqua. <laughs> yeah, yeah my, she she my she did. It was pretty rough. Yeah, she that hers was pretty rough too. But hers is the one that gave away who I think the killer is. Hers is the one that I think gave away. And, and I'll have to wait for book two to see if I'm right. Uh huh. Okay. You know, and I don't want to talk too much. Yeah, it. Go ahead. It's all right to share your uh, fan theory. Well, my main theory is the person that the first person that that died, the lady, uh, the Batwoman, because she had the psychic. Yeah, I'm gonna mute you. Yeah, her name was Fred. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that she's dead. I think I think she's the one going around, you know, uh, doing these deeds. Ah, huh, interesting. But it's it's just a thought, just a theory. It's either her or someone she trained, like before she trained the little bat boy, the little Robin dude. That's not Robin anymore. Uh, that lawyer guy, what's his name? Oh, he, he's uh, uh, he's a uh, crimson. Yeah, That's he's like like a Robin analog. Uh, I think is yeah. is either her or the person she trained before him. One of the, you know, and I don't, and there's no no clue to who she trained before him, but I know that he was not the first person she trained as a quote unquote uh, red crimson uh, Robin type guy. So that's where I'm at mm -hmm. now. That's my theory, you know, I, where stranger things have happened. It's a well, solid theory. You know, because uh, Mazu or Aqua, Aqua, guy, Aqua Gal. Yeah, Mazu. Yeah. She recognized the person before she bit it. Mm -hmm. She said, it's you. But the it's you <laughs> made it seem like it was a female it's you, like another girl, like a lady. For the people that didn't get in a, when get in the single floppies when they were available, you you missed out. When you had the chance to get the first five issues, all right, collected in the in the first campaign, you missed out. All right. If you didn't commission work from me, all right, and somehow managed to get a, a nice uh, extra bonus as a thank you for the commission, uh, then you missed out. Um, if you did not back the Red 10 1 and 2 uh, full volume uh, Kickstarter campaign, you missed out again. Yeah, right. that's, how, that's how I got uh, Red 10 Volume 1, uh, Cesar. He, um, he, he did me like a little... You know, like he was doing like a little thank you something. I forgot what I did because I do so much stuff. I forget what I do, but it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. What came around is he sent me something, and that was in that was part of the package. And Guys and Soldiers was part of the package. And I was like, "Yep, Red Ten Two needs to happen." Now, I'm not taking any credit that Red Ten Two is miraculously happen all, happening all of a sudden. I, I have no credit. I, nothing to do with me. But for some strange reason, it's happening. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, man, if 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 those of you that didn't back it and managed to get the second, I mean, first of all, if you went to the Kickstarter, you should have backed both, because it makes no sense to get one without the other. Because unless you just like to read the last part and then figure out what happened in the first part. But uh, but yeah, man. So that's my theory. Like it's either it's either her or someone she trained, um, and and I, I could be completely and totally wrong, and I'm fine with that. 
you know, but uh, I'm definitely intrigued. I'm definitely want to um, find out. Definitely want to read the second book. So I'm all in. I'm all in. Well, you'll get your chance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like definitely waiting for that book to come. Like, so, hey, show. who was it you that, that was telling me about that guy that has that YouTube channel? Um, he's a colorist. Um, so I was looking for a colorist on. Oh, Josh. Josh, Josh is, a, is, a, is a pretty yeah. good colorist. He hangs out with us. There was another. Um, there was another guy. Oh, that um, must have been Manny or somebody else. Yeah, someone gave me the name of this guy, Muhammad Ag Agbadi. Huh. Dude, so I had a conversation with him, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm gonna be hiring him to uh, color that God the Soldiers cover. Nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. That sounds like uh, the colorist that that uh, uh, Cassidy Blonde, K Blonde uses. You might have been K Blonde that you talked to. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly who it was. Um, that uh, that gave me the um, that gave me the uh, the lead on that. Yeah. It's um, probably Probably Kay Blanc because that sounds like the guy he uses. Pretty good guy, too. Oh, dude, the guy's a brilliant colorist, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Rates pretty reasonable, too, from what I heard. Yeah, well, I mean, I think he's, he's I think he's in Nigeria. So, okay, then. You know, that American money goes a long way mm. in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah, indeed it does. But um, let me see if I can pull up a piece. So this is like some of his work right here. Okay, this is somebody else. But he is good, though. No, this guy is amazing. Even your colorblind self can tell that this is good. Oh, dang. That's nice. Wow. Wow. Well, so, I'm looking at the shading and the way he's doing the, the shading yeah, and stuff. Yeah, no, that's that's actually, you can tell a lot from that. And uh, these are all, like, look at that. Look at the lighting on that. Yeah, the lighting is amazing. Yeah, he does a great job with that. And his tutorials are excellent. I, I like to watch his tutorials and or at least play them in the background mm -hmm. because he, uh, he, he has a very nice way of um, – presenting uh, the information for people to absorb. Right, right. So, um, yeah, so this guy's gonna be coloring my uh, my God and Soldiers cover. And, uh, you know, then I gotta see if, um, cause that cover is gonna look pretty hot. Um, and if that's the case, then I may actually see if he'd be interested in doing the interiors. Right. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but he's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good, you know. One of the one of the better ones that that I've seen out there. Now I think he's done like some 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 work for Marvel in DC, mm -hmm. uh, like little small projects and stuff here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised that he's actually not doing more. But it's funny, there's so many talented people, right? And you, you would think that they'd be getting work all the time, you know? Like, look at a guy like like Trusted. You would think that he'd be getting some kind of work. Right. On a more regular, you know? Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to get, you know, like a monthly gig or anything with uh, a company. I, I did for a while, but, uh, yeah, not now. I don't know. Hey, speaking of gigs, uh, what happened with that uh, Metal Dan thing? Oh, I'm still doing it. Um, there's no deadline on that. So I, I got started uh, breaking it down. Um, and then I got a couple of um, 
commission pieces come in, you know, and like the last one I did was for a Christmas present. So I had to go ahead and do it and I couldn't show it. So I'll, I'll share it eventually, but I just can't share it right now. No, 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 no. I, you know, yeah. do it. Nobody, you know, but I was just wondering if, you know, how that went, if it's going. You know what's awful? I, I hate this. Um, we were in uh, Roanoke, Virginia after Thanksgiving for <laughs> the engage, engagement party of my nephew. I didn't hate that part. I love that part. That was great. Right. Um, but we were in downtown Roanoke at the Pinball Museum. And uh, I found out later in the afternoon that Macho Dan works just a short distance away, you know, just like a few minutes away from the Pinball Museum. But I, I wouldn't have had any time, you know, that I could have slipped away and gone over and, and met him in person and talked with him. Right. And he was super busy too at his job. So. Uh -huh. Maybe next time. Maybe, maybe. So he's uh he's from Virginia, huh? Yep. Yeah. All the boys are from the East. All, all you guys are on the East coast. Hmm. Yeah. But you know, I know me, me, Macho Dan, Mutt Man, and I think Kevin Sharp is also. Off in the, the western part of the state. Those guys you're, are. You're from Virginia too? Oh yeah. Oh, I thought you were from North Carolina for some reason. I lived in North Carolina for a while when I got married. Um, my wife was in grad school at Duke. And so we lived in Durham for about nine and a half years. And I worked in Chapel Hill. Loved it down there. Absolutely loved it. My son might be going to a drama school out there over in Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be nice. It's a good place. That's what I was telling him, you know, because he wants to go to this drama school in uh, in New York. And I said, listen, I get it. You know, but my biggest concern is that New York is just. I just don't want it to swallow him up, you know, yeah. um, and it can. Whereas I think that that he could get. The, the 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 training that he wants to get at UNC uh, drama school and uh, and and um, not be burdened by all that extra stuff that comes with the super big city, you know? Right. Because if you're talented, you're talented. You don't need to be in the place, you know. Here's the thing: uh, Chapel Hill, um, Durham. Raleigh, because that's all in the same area, the Raleigh-Durham area. Um, there's a lot going on there. You know, that, like if he's gonna do drama, there's a lot going on there. They they, mm -hmm. they got they got a lot of, of uh, arts. Um, yes. And uh, and theaters. That's what I meant to say. Theater, arts, music. I mean, I I used to go over there all the time to catch um, ballet or. Um, a Broadway play or, you know, you know, concerts, uh, you know, to, to catch the symphonies, all that stuff happens over there, bro. I mean, it's, it's a lot of like, if he's going to go to a drama school, it's not like there's not plenty of avenues for him to be able to exercise uh, his skill set. Right. And that's what I was, you know, that's what I was telling him, you know, um, cause he's a, He's a good kid, but, you know, just keeping it real, New York being what it is, growing up in a Christian home, um, home my kids were homeschooled, I, I, I just think it, they'll be like, what the heck, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it's definitely a, a shock, but, you know, it, the thing every parent has to deal with is, and, and uh, you know, you raise the kids the best you can and hope that they remember what they learned. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to, you know, oh, just keep him safe or whatever, you know, not deny him, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm not really saying it right. You know, the opportunity to, to be around. Like, they, my kids definitely were never secluded. Like, we didn't keep them out. They know stuff. But, you know, we made the choice to homeschool them. You know, and uh, you know, which is it's been good, uh, and there's many blessings that come with that. You know, um, and the best thing about it is just no distractions. Right. But, 
you know, when obviously New York comes with distractions built in, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. But Chapel Hill might not be bad for him, you know. It's proud schools. You got Duke. You had UNC. Like you were talking about UNC, big basketball school. So, you know, there's there's always something going on. Yeah, my son's not much of a jock. No, I mean, <laughs> he's he'll, he'll, he'll catch the school spirit. Trust me, yeah. man. Basketball is so oh. big in North Carolina. I cared nothing for college basketball until I moved down there. And then, you know, <laughs> it, right after I moved down there, that's when Duke won its first national championship. And here we are in Durham. We went on campus, ran around the big bonfire in the parking lot with the students, you know, and my wife was a grad student, of course. And then we watched the championship game in Cameron Indoor Stadium on the big screen. Uh, I mean, that's you, you get sucked in. <laughs> yeah, no, no. North Carolina is a big college basketball state. You got Duke. You got UNC. You know, you got the Tar Heels. You got the Wolf Pack. <laughs> That's three powerhouses in one state, and, and you get sucked into it. You do. Uh, even if you don't care about it, but just when basketball season starts in that area, it's something else. It's like <laughs> it's in the air and in the water. Yeah, football season, nobody in North Carolina plays football. I mean, they do, okay? But they're not powerhouses. They're not going to win championships. Right. <laughs> You know, that's that's not what they're known for. They're definitely known for basketball. And when basketball season comes, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it, it, it's crazy. He may not watch a game, but I'm pretty sure he'll wear a, 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 a Tar Heel shirt <laughs> or something. It'll happen. It'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. It's like it's like Trusty said. You get around that, the hype gets so big. You got a uh, Tobacco Road, which is the road between UNC and Duke. <laughs> That's what they call it, Tobacco Road. And um, they're like what? Like, they're not that far apart. Oh no! So you know, just a what, what is 10, it? 10, 15 minutes apart, really? Yeah. I mean, Jeez, that's nothing. It didn't take me long to drive to work each day. Yeah, yeah so you got tap, you got tobacco road, and that's the that's that like a straight shot from UNC to, to Duke. And um, so when they get the, when they get the tobacco road rivalry going, I mean that's a lot of basketball in a small concentrated area. It is a lot of basketball. I'm telling you, around man. <laughs> yes, our, um, our bookkeeper at the office that I work. Uh, down there, she actually was one of the tutors for the men's basketball team. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And she would tell us about how nice the boys were, you know. And they took her to the final four and everything. I'm like, doggone it! Don't tell me nice things about them. I don't want to hear nice things about them. I'm always rooting <laughs> against them. <laughs> yeah, but I was I was a big Carolina blue guy, uh, Tar Heel fan when I was there. Well, I did some work for, for UNC at the architecture firm down there, and th they were really good people to work with. Yeah, really guys, uh, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a good school. It is. Very good school. So it's not a bad – well, I'm saying all that to say this, but it's not a bad choice for, for you to send a kid. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I agree. Listen, that's what where my heart is leaning towards. I just got to get him to buy into it, you know. Well, look, uh, get you some brochures, uh, you know, and, and scout the area. There's a lot of um, performing arts um, in North Carolina. Uh, nice, nice um, performing arts centers. I mean, uh, we went and saw... What we we went to saw we went to, we <laughs> we went to saw we went to see Curtis Blow, uh, the hip hop Nutcracker. Uh, it, it's funny. It it was it was a good time. It was hilarious. You, know? <laughs> <Huh>? you say so? <laughs> no, it was. You know, it was great. Um, for old school old heads like me, because they had, they were playing all the all all the original hip hop. You know. 
so so it was great. And then Curtis Blow ended it with a uh, with a with a mini concert at the end. Come on, man, that thing was ridiculous. It was it was good. It was really good. But we watched uh, Racing in the Sun. Racing in the Sun. Mm -hmm. there too. Um, damn, what else did we watch there? We went to a couple of uh, orchestras down there. Uh, it was pretty good, mostly for the Star Wars stuff. There was like orchestra night that did all Star Wars theme songs and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. They would do that like the Museum of Art. They would do stuff like that. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, it was good stuff, man. Um, you know, reasonably priced too. We saw uh, a um, a, a musical based on uh, Christopher Columbus that was trying to work out the kinks before going up to Broadway or off Broadway, and they came to Duke. And we saw that. Yeah, no, it's 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 good stuff, man. That that uh, hip hop Nutcracker Suite thing, it was it was hilarious, but it was good. You know, we seen some. Yeah, it, so it's a good area, dude. Like, it's a good area. I think uh, for performing arts, uh, I don't think I don't think it's a bad choice. <coughs> Plus, it's not it's not super close to where you live, but it's halfway to New York, so it's not a full drive. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? I can get there in about uh, eight hours, nine hours, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Sounds yeah. about right. So yeah, you know, and then of course, uh, a few more, a few hours up the road, they got the Carolina Panthers up in Charlotte. So I know you say he's not a jock, but like I said, it gets you. <laughs> Maybe I'm put the put the put the screen on trusty. I see he's drawing some Pope fire stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> and now I now instantly regret putting the screen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's uh, Speedy and uh, and the Pope. That's yes, it is. Wow, very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I first when you when you was looking at the on the other side, I couldn't see what it was, but now I saw that you put in some pencils, darker pencils. So I was like, okay, I could put it on him. Yeah, I was trying to work out the pose. You know, she told me the kind of pose that she wants and, and gave me an example. I'm trying to work it out, but you know, I've, things some things are a little stretched here. I'm gonna have to schmooze them around when I put it on the light box, but that's okay. I don't have to redraw the whole thing. Hey, as long as you don't have to redraw it. That's, yeah, no, man. <clears throat> yeah, but it's a good area. I trust you used to live in that area. I lived in that area. It's not bad. It's not bad. My brother-in-law just uh, bought a house in Clayton. Clinton? Clayton. Clayton. Oh, Clayton. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, Clayton, uh, North Carolina. Yeah, because there's a Clinton, a Clayton. <laughs> and there in Cary, that's where Red Storm uh, Entertainment is that does the Tom Clancy video games. Because mm -hmm. one of my friends works there. And then there, there used to be a studio of comic book artists in Hillsboro. That was the one that had uh, Michael Ringo and Richard Case and Chuck Boykevich and Jeff Parker. Uh, up there that was it was amazing you know had all this talent in, in this area and in this small little town they didn't all live there of course but that's where the studio was right yeah 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 that's a good area though i ain't gonna lie and like i was telling josh because uh Miranda says i went to state college Famous alumni from there, Jim Henson and Pernell Roberts, among others. Oh, Pernell Roberts, yeah. He was in yeah. Bonanza and then Trapper John, MD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bloodthirsty Gaming in the house saying, hey, brother, hey, Bloodthirsty, thanks for joining us this evening, man. We're just chilling, drawing, you know. Yeah. I didn't go to no, I didn't go to no college where no famous people went because I'm a nerd and famous people don't go to nerd schools. We had uh, <laughs> Glenn Close and John Stewart went to William and Mary. Nobody goes to nerd schools. No famous people went to no no schools. For what I do. Well, I didn't go to college. I went to the Marine Corps, but Heartbreak Ridge was filmed on the base that I was stationed on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. 
So I got to see Clint Eastwood do his thing. Did you really? Yeah. Very cool. That was pretty cool. I'll be honest. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Now the most famous person I met was when I was uh, at Fort Buchanan, Puerto Rico. I met uh, Felix Tito Trinidad. Okay. And, uh, he did he did PT with us. <laughs> Came in, did PT, then he lost to Bernard Hopkins. I think uh, I I feel bad now. I think I, I might have jinxed him. Yeah, you guys <laughs> wore him out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went there because it was good, cheap, local. And for the first couple of years, my uncle footed the bill. Well, that's amazing. If, if I had an uh, uncle like that, good. you know, my life would be pretty good. But in my family, it's, it's like uh, Chronicles of Riddick. You keep what you kill. <laughs> <laughs> in my family, is keep what you kill, son. If you can't get it on your own, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, like a WAPO, I, I had to uh, rely on uh, on the good old, you know, U.S. government. But it is what it is. Yeah, it was fun. I, I, I never I never complain. I never complain. Life is beautiful. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, that's right. She says, I have a degree in fine arts for what it's worth. Hey, look, fine arts is good. Hey, me too. You know, fine arts is good. I tell people, man, you know, the way the world is set up now, you know, you got to figure out what you want to do in life and then figure out what's the best way to get there. Sometimes that's that's going to college and getting, you know, a uh, a degree, and sometimes that's uh, going to school and getting certs. Yeah. As long as you do something that gets you to where you want to go, like Pablo said, he never finished school because you know drawing sexy women didn't require any school. You know, but uh, and then find out what you want to do, man, and go that route. You know. There's more than one way to skin a cat. That's right. Not everybody takes the same path. You know, there's more than one way. Let's see. Marion says, when I went, it was 500 a semester, more like 26K nowadays. Yep. Paolo says, I never finished school. I just went on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, did mm -hmm. my artwork. I became famous. And that's it. What's all this cool stuff about? I just, I just draw. I just draw. So Pablo says. Uh, guys, FYI, my daughter is in the hospital, probably giving birth right now or getting ready to. You'll be the grandpa? Second time. Oh, man. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome news, man. We'll keep her in prayers. Make sure everything goes good, smooth. Got you, Brady. Poor thing. I felt so bad for her. She's been struggling the last month. You know, so yeah. yeah, we are we getting close to that time frame too. Oh yeah. How far along is uh, your your uh, wife? Last, I think it's like two and a half months left. And uh, yeah, last trimester for sure. But I think it's like less than less than three months, like two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pablo says Pablo is a PhD in school drawing of righteous bobs and booby and booty <laughs> and booty. Uh, yeah, freaking a, a wapo man cranking out the grand, you know, with the grandkids. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. He's my hero. You guys got to keep buying my books. <laughs> <laughs> Buy my books when they come out. And look, if we do that, we'll be enabling you to continue to have grandchildren, man. No, man, we got to we got to nip you in the bud and get you out of that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I can't control what my grown kids do. We need to stop enabling you. We need to stop It's an intervention, El Guapo. This is an intervention. It's not because we don't like your books, but we got to intervene on your behalf, brother. 
You got to change the name of the show now. Digital <laughs> intervention. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my lord. Yeah. That almost sounds uh, like, sound like my boy Manny. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yeah. Trusty good at the voices, man. He's good at the voices. Got to be careful with Trusty. <laughs> Greetings, true believers. Welcome to another exciting adventure of E. Ortiz and his amazing friends. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> he is good, man. That is good. The dude is talented, man. The dude is talented. Super talentado. Super talented. He is good, man. Can't get mad at the trusty. <laughs> well, you can, but you can, makes but no what's sense. The point? <laughs> it makes you- no sense. You know, you good dog princess stealing my line. Good dog is is watching. Hey, like, Manny! You know, don't steal, don't steal the Manny's line. Oh my lord! Oops, I didn't mean for that to happen. Well, we need Manny in here to do it himself. Is it, is it uh, possession nine tenths of the law? Yeah, that's what they always say, right? So he's got to be here to you know take ownership of that line. Eventually, you know, you know how it, you know he's he's in a whole different time zone, man. And I don't, I don't rush, I don't rush the Manny. But uh, but Manny, people people are receiving their libro, the book, the tank ferret. He's around too. Hey tank, man, they got tank, they got Manny, they got all kinds of people. This is what I'm talking about. We haven't had tank on in a while. Well, Tank Tank's busy, man. He's moving. Oh, I know, you know, I know. Doing big things, you know. And trying, uh, and all that good stuff, man. But we got the many and the Tank in the chat. That, man, that's 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 awesome, dude. That is awesome stuff. I, I can't I can't complain. So, um, I think that we were talking about trailers earlier but does anyone want to talk about the wonder woman trailer at all oh yeah i watched that today for the first time yeah i haven't seen it yet either you know <laughs> i'll catch up with you guys eventually what is up with the golden armor you know when i just saw the the images of it they just you know release photos i was like eh. you know but part of it was because they did it on that really awful you know multicolored background yeah but i don't know i don't know i, I, I did catch the black widow trailer though i did catch that one. Oh yeah what do you think I, of that actually i actually kind of liked it a lot of people didn't like it they said it was kind of boring and drab but I, I thought it had a lot of little easter eggs that that might lead up to some other stuff in the movie do you think that it was too late, perhaps? I mean, late in the game, yes, but it's a prequel, so you know. Yeah, I mean, we definitely should have had it years ago. Yeah, we should have. We should have had that first before <clears throat> Captain Marvel. Um, yeah, but you know, the thing with that is they they were waiting. Somebody was trying to get it. I don't know. Uh, why but i thought the trailer was fine i didn't have a problem with it you know i think it leaves open for a lot of things um i'm kind of digging it um the storyline the way they're trying to do it um from for the one trailer that i saw and uh i just you know it's like i tell people um from the first time scarlett johansson stepped on the screen on iron man 2 as black widow she was black widow like you know what I'm saying? Her demeanor, yeah. her character, the way she played the role. It's different than <coughs> than Brie Larson playing Captain Marvel because I think she was trying to oversell it. And, and Scarlet was just naturally playing the part. You know, like 
I don't know how else to explain it, but it was more believable to see Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow than it was to see Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. If that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, I wasn't really a ScarJo fan until Iron Man two, and after that, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, um, she's done a lot of other movies. Um, I saw her. I was watching an old movie called The Spirit. It's like a black and white Frank Miller thing. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, the city, and that's, she was on there with, with Samuel Jackson, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, she did pretty good on that one too, but it was not like it was not like Black Widow. It's not like I don't know for some reason it's like that character and her just clicked in my mind. And I think she's a fine actress, but in my mind it's like that she's character and her clicked. Actress. She's literally a fine actress. You know what I'm saying? Fine actress. Fine. <laughs> is she a fine actress or is she a fine actress? <laughs> <laughs> she's both. She's both. She's a little too thin for my taste. Maybe both. both. Yeah. You know. Uh, they did Black Widow Dirty. She should have been the first female-led movie for Marvel, not Captain Marvel. Yeah, it should have been. Should have, would have, could have. But, you know, um, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not mad at the timing right now because, uh, you know, it is what it is. So the way I look at it is um, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, the movie, should have, if it would have happened when it should have happened, then the Marvel Universe would have been doomed because it should have been, if you think about the chronological order, it should have been Captain America, the first Avenger, then Captain Marvel. You see what I'm saying? Because yes. if you look at the chronological time when it happened, it, it would have been Captain America, then Captain Marvel should have been the second movie. But if that movie would have came out as the second movie for the Marvel franchise, it, it would have been doomed. Yeah. It would have been doomed. No, um, Iron Man was an excellent choice to start the whole thing. What it's it's not that it was an it was not only that it was an excellent choice, it's the fact that they got Robert Downey Jr. Oh yes. To be so effective as as Tony Stark, man. It it just like like they hit some home runs, you know, when they um Chris Evans as Captain America, home yep. run. Uh Robert Downey Jr. as as Tony Stark slash Iron Man, that was a home run. Um, Hemsworth is Thor. That was a home run, and uh, the guy that plays Loki was his name, uh, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. That was a home run. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that was a grand slam right there. Yeah, that that was that was beautiful. I don't want it to fail, but I have no faith in Wonder Woman eighty four. Not after the trailer verified leaked script. Oh no! Now Wonder Woman is actually a good. Uh, the first Wonder Woman was an excellent movie. Um, who else? Then the, the Scar Joe is Black Widow. Um, even uh, Scarlet Witch. What's her name? Um, I, like the actress, I can't Elizabeth remember. Olsen. Huh? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Olsen. Olsen. Yeah, she she does fine as Scarlet Witch. I think Vision, mm -hmm. the guy, the guy to play uh, Vision, pretty good. Oh, Bettany, he's he's fantastic. Yeah, even even the late comer uh, for uh, for Doctor Strange. Um, Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, yeah, I can never say his name. <laughs> he wants to, he wants to say pumpkin patch. That's why. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> I was like even that guy. That was that was pretty good. I thought he did a. I thought he did pretty good as Doctor Strange. I, I liked him. Yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought it was great. I'm I'm trying to think who has been miscast in any of the Marvel movies. And I, I know different people have different opinions, but you know, for my taste, I, I can't really, well, Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the Hulk was all a CGI character and people just really wasn't feeling it. Yeah. I, I thought Ed Norton did a, a very good job as Bruce Banner in the incredible Hulk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Mariah says, I admit to misgivings about RDJ playing Iron Man. Well, you know that the other choice was the Doogie Hauser guy. What's his name? Oh, no. Neil Patrick Harris. That's who they wanted. Yeah, he could never pull it off. What? They wanted him for Tony yeah. Stark? Right. Yep, they sure did. No, I'm glad they did it that yeah. way. So you could have had Doogie Hauser trying to be Iron Man, or you could have had RDJ, who, who pulled an amazing... An amazing job. Every movie that he cameoed in, it was it was a good movie to watch. 
in yeah. my opinion. And you can say whatever you want to, but all his cameos were amazing. They were talking about Carl Smooth and Sonic Tark too. Tom Cruise wouldn't have worked either. No. You know, and you and definitely you could uh, and and as good an actor as uh, Keanu Reeves is, he couldn't have been Tony Stark because he only said he's like he's like uh, Clint Eastwood. He only says two or three words at a time. You know, as good as John Wick is, how much dialogue does Keanu Reeves have? Yeah, no, you you got to be able to pull off the snark pretty well, and uh, RDJ was just fantastic at that. And that's and that's all I'm saying, like. Like, it's like, I don't know. It's like a marriage made in heaven. And and despite what anybody says about RDJ, and yeah, it was a risky because RDJ had just gotten from the jail and all his troubles and all that stuff, you know. He also wanted the guy who played Hammer in Iron Man 2 for Stark, since Hammer and Stark, like, acted were perfectly in that role. Now, that dude, he couldn't have been Tony Stark either. No, but I love him <laughs> in different roles. I love him as Justin Hammer. I loved him in Galaxy Quest. <laughs> Sam Rockwell. That's his name. Sam Rockwell. Yeah, I, I just I just honestly speaking and truthfully speaking, I can't see it. No. I can't see it. Because even when he played the um, Hammer, he, he he couldn't play off of what Tony uh off of what Robert Donnie was doing. And that's just my personal opinion. That's just my personal opinion. I just, I just didn't see the dynamic. Right. Like, like even though he's supposed to be a Tony, Tony Stark like character, he well, just he's a Tony like Stark cheap. wannabe character. Yeah, he, he, he just, he looked like a, like a, a like a cheap knockoff, you know. And, and I don't know if that's what you want, man. You want out there, you know, you want the authentic authenticity, you know. But they have some misses too, like uh, Jane Foster. What's her name? Uh, Natalie Portman. They could have picked somebody else. <laughs> yeah. They could have picked somebody else. She don't look like she was happy. Well, and even you your boy Jeremy Renner <laughs> as Hawkeye was pretty good. You know, even though he didn't want to do that role, but you know, now I'm glad. I'm pretty glad he is. Yeah. He did it. Shoot. Pretty I mean isn't he going to have a series on Disney Plus too? Yeah. So it it came out beneficial for him, and he was like not wanting to like because uh, he he said he was unhappy with the way they portrayed his character when he on on uh, first Avengers. You know when he got mind wiped and being a bad guy and like he's that's said he had real issues with that. Well, and uh, so he was like, nope, I just want to kill this character off. Like, can we kill him off? And they were like, no, we got more stuff to do, son. There's a bigger picture here. You're laying the groundwork. It's a bigger picture. You just got to, you know, because Disney's so secretive. You're like, they're not going to tell you everything. They're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> just, just trust. Take a word for it. Take a word for it. <coughs> but it is what it is. I've switched over to the light box. That's why I turned off my camera. I'm not no, sure. No, no, no worries. No show. worries, buddy. We we put it back on uh, El Guapo Comics. El Guapo. El Gran Guapo. Who has deleted and re-inked and deleted many times. That's okay. The great thing about digital. About digital. <laughs> I'm mad at it. I'm not mad at any of <laughs> I ain't mad at you, brother. Just trying to figure out what this dude's arm went to. I'm mad at it. I'm over here doing this, and Rockwell was also good in G-Force. Paul Rob was good as Ant-Man, yeah. I give him that. I just don't know why they was trying to go. I guess they were trying to make Ant-Man like a comic relief. I wasn't sure what they were trying to do with him. But, uh, you know. But that's what I mean of... And that, that just goes to my to my point about Paul Rudd. It's like you liked him playing Ant Man, although you may have said, "I don't know if this like that Ant Man works," but like you liked him, like the way they they did that story mm -hmm. may not have been everybody's cup of tea. But you know, to me, it was it was 
fine. I mean, it was a surprise. But it was a you know, it was definitely a, a, a different twist, and uh, and it was it was it good. It, it kind of played off. You know, they say that Marvel movies are kind of campy, except for of course the the R rated ones from um, Deadpool and uh, Lo and uh, Logan. So those those were a little different. Took yeah. a little more serious tone. But I, I kind of like those too, you know. And that's why I like the Marvel Netflix uh, series because they were the gritty series. Like mm -hmm. it showed that Marvel had a different, you know, had another side to it that wasn't all, you know, campy. You know, and and when they did Infinity War, when they when the heroes lost, which you know anybody that was following knew that it was going to be a two part movie, and you know of course they were going to lose on the first one. But even when they did that, when they said, you know, heroes can lose and these are the consequences and everybody was so mad at Infinity War. I was like, no, nah, this is great. You know, this is great because Endgame is going to be that much sweeter. And, uh, right. And to me, it was, you know, I, I enjoyed Endgame. But uh, yeah, so what I'm doing now with the wife is on movie nights is we're, we're taking the whole Marvel series now that we got Disney Plus. And we're watching it in chronological order as opposed to release date order. Oh, okay. So I've been so what I've been doing is finding out the time frames and then putting the movies in those time frames. And uh so we I think we're up to the first Avengers now. Which which now that she's watching it that way is making more sense. You know, because now she's like, Oh, they've been talking about uh Wakanda ever since you know, this movie, you know, I say, yeah, they've been teasing Black Panther for a long time. You know, people just wasn't catching on. Miranda says, I was better at Endgame than Infinity War. Yeah, I, I, well, you know, the thing with an Endgame is you knew that Tony Stark had to die. <laughs> you had to accept that coming into the, into the movie. You know, some people wasn't ready for that. But you have to kind of accept that coming into the movie that Tony Stark was going to have to make that ultimate sacrifice. And uh, because, you know, that that's kind of what they've been building up towards. For the first Avengers all the way through, you know, they was always saying that Tony Stark was the selfish guy, you know, that wouldn't, you know, the guy that wouldn't lay his life down for the team. But since uh, the first Avengers, you know, he was the dude that, you know, that that was always willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. You can only continue to try to make the ultimate sacrifice so many times before you know it gets cashed in. Right. Yeah. You can't cheat, cheat death, but so many times. Yeah, because he got luck. He uh, that should have sacrificed Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> she's not sacrifice. She's not sacrificable. According to the, See, this is what kills me. According to the MCU, Captain Marvel is probably the strongest one they have. But according to Marvel, the comics, Thor is stronger than Captain Marvel. Now, that being said, they had Thor getting his butt whipped <laughs> by Thanos on Endgame like it was nothing. You know, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I loved Infinity War. Endgame was not so much. Hulk and Lebowski Thor were awful. <laughs> uh, I wasn't too mad about the Thor because eventually they were going to have to bring Professor Hulk into the fray. Um, I just didn't know when and where. But eventually they had to bring Professor Hulk. They're going to only give us so many mindless Hulks. Right. Uh, the big the big boy Thor, it was, a, it was interesting. See, the way I thought about it was I thought they were going to uh, do the unworthy line uh, storyline when that when I saw him like that, but then he goes to Asgard and he still wheels Yonder. So I was like, okay, he didn't really do anything between all of that to be deemed worthy or unworthy. So I'm confused, you know. But it is what it is, you know. We don't we don't get mad. Just kind of move forward because if you think about it, they have more hits than misses. So yep. you know, and I'm. I'm just loving the fact that, you know, we're living in a time when we can finally get good comic book, good superhero movies. The special effects are there. You know, they've gotten to the point where it's all believable. You know, I'm just having a good time. Yeah, definitely. And that's what I do. I try to enjoy them to the best of my ability. 
but like I said, you you kind of were expecting Endgame with Tony Stark to go out. It was it was a nice touch that he had a little baby girl, you know. And um, if you have Disney Plus, if you don't have Disney Plus, but if you have Disney Plus, go to the Endgame. Go uh, click on the Endgame movie, and don't go to the movie. Go to the special uh, cut and uh, and more features. And there's a lot more stuff there, man. There, there's some stuff there that's amazing. We just signed up for it tonight because, you know, we changed our cell phone plan with Verizon. So we get a year free. Yeah. So the first thing we watched was two of the Mater's Tall Tales from Cars. Yeah. No, no. If uh, if you go to the end game and you don't even have to watch the movie, just go to where it has the special features. They got... Um, they got a, uh, a a snippet where Tony gets to talk to his daughter. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. They got a snippet. Well, you know where that uh, where they're in uh, Volmir, where they have to set for the Soul Stone. Oh they, yeah, Volmir. They got a yep, yep. they got a snippet on there where instead of um, Hawkeye and Black Widow fighting themselves, they're actually fighting Thanos' crew. And it was such, it's so much better, dude. Just the two of them, the two non powered individuals fighting Thanos' crew? Yeah, That's because cool. they were, yeah, because they were there and they were like, you know, one of you must sacrifice. And then they're looking at each other and all of a sudden Thanos' whole crew just teleports down. Hey, we'll and sacrifice then, them. <laughs> you know, and then they're like, oh shoot, if we don't, if one of us doesn't sacrifice ourselves first, they're gonna get dug on Soul Stone. So then uh they, they turn from fighting each other to fighting them to kind of you know fighting off those guys. And then while Clint is trying to hold them off, you know, Natasha just takes a running jump start and just just flies off the edge. It it is so much cooler than what we saw in the movie, but I can see why they did took it out because. It wouldn't have made no sense, you know, because last time we saw Thanos and his crew, they were on the ship and they were going to Morag to get the Power Stone, right. not, you know, to get the Soul Stone. So how would they be there when they're supposed to be somewhere else? But the scene in, in a vacuum by itself, oh, my goodness, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. So if you if you got a couple of minutes, you know, click on click on the movie in game. And I uh, just go for the special features, man. It's got some, it's got some good stuff on there. All right, sold. You know, just to check that out, just the ability to check those little, those little snippets out. Just uh, when you watch it, hit me up and tell me if that is not a cool in a vacuum scene. Like if that was a trailer for a movie, sold, sold. The one with Tony Stark and his daughter Morgan is so sad, Aww. you know, because she's all grown up. She's not a little girl anymore, right? You know, but she knows who he is, but she doesn't. He doesn't know who she is, you know. And and he's second guessing himself. He's like, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out if I did the right thing. Was it the right call? This and that, you know. And then she's like, No, nah, you know, you did the right thing. Da 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 da. It's you just gotta watch it, man. I'm telling you right now, it's well worth it. Right. Well worth it. I mean, you don't have to watch the whole movie. Just click on the special features. Well, I only saw the movie <laughs> once, so I'm ready to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, but don't think you're going to watch Infinity War because Infinity War is still on the contract elsewhere. It's still so on you, Netflix, yeah. So you won't get that till July 2020, June 2020. Well, I've, I've seen Infinity War so many times. You know. I like Infinity War, but I haven't been able to watch it a whole bunch of times, you know. But um, if you check it out, I'm telling you, check out them snippets. And uh, I think I think you're not gonna be disappointed. I think I think that whole fight for the Soul Stone thing. I think you're gonna like it. It is so cool. And like I said, in a vacuum, as a as a as a trailer type deal thing, mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be mm -hmm. like yo. It's it's cool, it's cool, <laughs> but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have made sense in the timeline of the movie right. itself. I can see why they cut it. I can see what they were going for though, because it is a bad, it is a nice scene, you know. 
<laughs> but don't get it twisted, man. I like the way they uh, they did Hawkeye, which actually is the Ronin persona of Hawkeye as opposed to Hawkeye. Right. You know, I like that persona they brought about because he, he held his own, you know, even when he was in the tunnel or under the building or whatever, you know, he was holding his own against the monsters and slicing the monsters in half with his sword was actually pretty cool. You yeah. know? <laughs> but I digress. I digress. You know, don't mind me. I'm just, you know, just those little features were worth it just to, just to see him. And I don't think I don't know if they're in the DVD, but I know they're for sure on the Disney Plus. Well, I'm looking forward to um, watching some of the first season of the Mickey Mouse Club because you know I'm not old enough to re remember when the Mickey Mouse Club first came on, but I do remember they they started rebroadcasting them uh, in our area in the afternoons, mm -hmm. uh, so I could come home from school and catch an episode, and that was really cool. Yeah, I don't really watch anything else though. I mean, I watch like the movies. Like I said, me and the wife were doing we're doing the chronological order of Marvel Universe, cinematic universe, meaning not not release dates, but when I think the movie should have happened. And that and that's how we did it. We did Captain America: the First Avenger first. We did Captain Marvel second, because that was in the eighties. I think I brought, and then I think after that I did Iron Man one. Right. And after Iron Man one was Thor. They, they don't have Incredible Hulk, do they? Yeah, they do. I think they, do? they do. I'm gonna say yes, but but don't don't get me the line. Check it out. I'm pretty sure that they do, but I don't know which one because they got stuff in there that that I don't didn't even know was Disney. Like they got Avatar in there. Right. I knew they um, you know they've got that. Uh, Pandora area down in the Animal Kingdom, so that makes sense that they would have Avatar on there. Mm -hmm. This is what I said the other night. Not bad, not bad. You know, uh, my Miranda says I don't have to worry about that. My brother gave me the Infinity War and Endgame DVDs for my birthday. I can double feature anytime I want. Nice. Winky face. <laughs> and she hit us with the winky face. Nah, man, no, nah, that's good though. I mean, I, I'm not mad at it. And uh, but yeah, dude, this, they got a lot of stuff in there that I'm like, okay, I didn't know this was Disney, but I, I'm I'm game, you know. Um, you know, a movie I I, I do want to watch, <laughs> and I know it should be in there. Flubber with Robin Williams. Oh man, <laughs> I remember that. that was pretty good. That movie was I love uh, Flubber with Robin Williams, man. And, uh, but I then like again, the originals I'm, with Fred McMurray too. Yeah, but then uh, I, 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 that that I was right. for loving that. Yeah, that's some good stuff. Uh, you need to watch Iron Man two before Thor because Coulson mentions the event. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I did. I think I did that. I think I watched Iron Man one, Iron Man two, Thor. Because yeah, on Iron Man two, Coulson talks about going to New Mexico. Right, right, right. So I did watch Iron Man one, Iron Man two. Then I watched Thor, and I think after Thor, we watched um, the first Avengers. So that's where I'm at right now. That's where I'm at right now. You know. So it's I saw. Cool. Someone uh, on Twitter that he uh, tweeted out that uh, it's it's official. We are getting a Shazam too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's good. Yep, I like that a lot. That's a good movie. That was one of the better DC movies. You know, I think uh, when they did Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam, I think I think they they righted the ship a little bit. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the ship was not. In the right path, but in my eyes, they weren't comparing to the Marvel movies. Yeah. And I think that when they did uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Shazam shortly thereafter, I think I think that kind of you know took took the moment. But you know, everything is ebbs and flows. So, because at first, you know, the, the Dark Knight trilogy was was beating anything Marvel was doing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. 
like Marvel couldn't couldn't get anything off the ground. They did the Dark Knight. Marvel did uh, the Blade trilogy, but a lot of people didn't even know Blade was Marvel. They had X Men. <laughs> they had X Men. That, that sort of you know had its ups and downs. Yeah, that, yeah. And that time had was something like, going with the Fantastic Four after the first movie. You're like, all right, and then. I don't know what they screwed the pooch so bad on that second movie. I was like, what? Is, what are we like, you know, they just try to reboot it. And of course they had the what the three reboots of Spider Man. Like, what are we on the third reboot of Spider Man? Fourth reboot of Spider Man? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lorenzo Slee stacks in the house saying hello to everybody. How you doing, Lorenzo? Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, you know, it is what it is. Then, you know, Marvel took off. Like I said, Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr., freaking perfect match. They just hit it out the park. And if you think about it, the first Iron Man was before they fell into that whole MCU Disney umbrella. So it was a little more risque. That's right. That was before Disney purchased Marvel. So it was a little more risque. It wasn't full risque, you know, but it was a little more risque. Like, oh. uh, you know, Tony Stark had the the pole de- the pole in his plane. <laughs> but it's oh, too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Oh man. Well, that's that thing. You would not, but be- you wouldn't believe a Doogie Howser plane. Tony Stark would have. A <laughs> I, I think, to me, that wouldn't work, but it definitely works with Robert Downey. Right. He's a different kind of cool. But you know what? The thing is this. If if I say, you know, uh, Neil Patrick Harris as opposed to Doogie Hauser, you know, because I just killed his whole credibility by saying Doogie Hauser. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would have still had the same I thought, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the Doogie Hauser. Wait a minute. Doogie Hauser? Doogie Hauser can't be Iron Man. They, they, you just killed it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe like, how I met your parents, Neil Patrick Harris might have been able to pull it off, but Doogie Hauser MD, uh, that's a negative ghost writer. The pattern's full, you know. I don't know who knows. Then there was um, Jimmy Palmiotti posted something about Jonah Hex, and I mentioned something about the movie. How I went in there. And I I was like, okay with it, but I'm like, wow, there were so many missed opportunities in this movie. And I think they cast it okay, Mm -hmm. but that whoever wrote that script, I was like, what the heck are you guys doing? This thing made no sense. Right. You know, you you really, you really wasted a good, uh, uh, that was Josh Brolin, right? He, uh, Mm -hmm. he was, I thought he, I thought, I was like, yeah, this guy could definitely pull off Jonah Hex, you know? And make it look good. Yeah, he, he sure pulled off Thanos. I was gonna say, man, <laughs> Josh Brolin is like the king of the comic book movies. He got Thanos, Jonah Hex, and he was a uh, Cable, right? Yeah, yeah, dude, he was he was in those like back to back almost, wasn't he? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He got in really good shape for the Deadpool movie. Yeah, he did. I got to get on that workout myself. <laughs> well, you know, you got to have money and be a superstar. I guess so. And a personal chef. Yeah, personal chef, personal yeah. trainer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the part that would really kill me is not not being able to, uh, you know, prepare the uh, proper food. Yeah. That's what kills yeah, me. Yeah, you know, when you when that's your job and you can work out five hours a day, take the rest of the day off. <laughs> but that's not taking a day off with them. That's part of the workday ritual. Yeah. Yeah, I know that they seat. work long hours, but let's keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> they're not uh, going in and monitoring a screen for nine hours, and they're not fielding yeah. calls from customers left and right like I am, you know, yeah, trying to yeah. sell stuff. That's not what they're doing. Yeah, they get up and they do their little workout. They eat, you know, they go to their little acting sessions, maybe the little, you know, uh, promotional thing here and there, but. They got a pretty nice life. They do. They do. Uh, Mariano says, Fabro loves the source material. You can tell with the projects he does. Yep. That's why the Mandalorian is doing so good. Fabro is actually uh, involved in that. And the Mandalorian is actually pretty good. So. Yeah, I've heard people say, look, the guy gave us the Marvel 
universe method. He gave us, you know, the Mandalorian. Make him head of Lucasfilm. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be crazy. Farrell's doing a good job with the Mandalorian. I'm not gonna lie. And anybody who who's not liking the Mandalorian, I don't I don't know what the what their what their issue is. To be honest with you, I don't see. I don't see. It's it's like a it's like a space western, man. You know, like. All you need is Clint Eastwood's voice coming out of the Mandalorian's mask, and you'd be like, yep, we're there. I'm looking forward to finally being able to watch it. Yeah, well, you know, the good thing about that is there's only a few episodes. Damn mm -hmm. it, the Eagle beat the Giants. That's bad for the Cowboys. <laughs> ah, Lord have mercy. Back to the drawing board. So wait, oh, oh yeah, yeah, never mind. Never mind. I, I got sidetracked. I was watching the game while doing this and inking and talking to you guys. <laughs> Let's see. You could tell how hard Febro worked on Iron Man 1. He dropped a significant amount of weight during the movie. They even had to resize the wig he had for playing happy because of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he did lose a lot of weight for that movie. And not only that, he's the one that championed uh, getting RDJ on, on Iron Man 1. Uh, has anyone seen the trailer for the new Ghostbusters? I think the only one that has is El Guapo. I saw it. And and Trusty. You got two people that saw it. I didn't see it. I, I have not seen it. I'm slacking. I'm sorry. I apologize. But you know, there was no funny in it whatsoever. No funny in it? No funny. In what? In the Ghostbusters trailer. No, well, they're 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 hitting that that horror bent. I'm glad that they did it that way first, because it it can it pulls you in. But I think there's going to be comedy relief in there, and I think it's all going to be centered around Paul Rudd. Yeah, maybe you never know. I honestly don't know. I have to check it out. You know, sometimes uh, trailers don't do. Sometimes trailers. Uh, do no justice, and sometimes trailers do over justice. <laughs> well, and this is just the first one, too. So, you know, the yeah. second one could be completely different. Like, take for instance, the Joker. Apparently, it was a smash hit. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. But if, if I was to judge that movie by the trailers, I would never watch it. You know what I'm saying? But apparently, yeah. it resonated with people. No, I know exactly what you're saying because, yeah, the trailers didn't do anything for me. But everybody says how good it is, and my son included. So I'm like, all right. Yeah, they said it's, it's a good standalone movie, kind of outside of the DCU. But, you know, and apparently, you know, it it it, it raked in the dough. Made a billion. So I'm thinking Marvel needs to do a Doctor Doom. <laughs> I bet you that would. I would do some serious tickets. They did a Doctor Doom movie on his own. Who would play it? You know, that's a great question. It's a mask, so who cares? <laughs> well, no, because the guy who played him in the first Fantastic Four movie that we got was ill-suited for Doctor yeah. Doom. And he had a weak-ass voice. You know who I think could do it? That guy Lars something or other from the um um that TV series Hannibal mm. that was on NBC Lars something what the heck is his name um someone help me from the chat um come on guys you got to know what I'm talking about from Hannibal. Hannibal. Hannibal, the TV series. Yeah, you're about. talking about the actual the guy that actually played Hannibal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what his name is. I know he's from one of those European countries. I yeah. know what you're talking about though. He's like French, I think. Is he French? Uh, uh is he? Google? Google? Hannibal TV series. Yeah. <laughs> hey Alexa. <laughs> Hannibal. TV series. That TV series was spooky. Uh, let's see who played this it. Guy. 
Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, but the heck was his name? It's not oh. Mads Mickelson, is it? No, hold on. Yeah, what did what'd you say? Mads Mickelson? Something like that. Who was the um the villain in Casino Royale and who was um uh the villain in Doctor Strange? Yeah, and he was in that uh, that Netflix uh show that was based on a graphic novel where he was like a uh kind of like a John Wick but a Russian version. Okay. Um oh, what the heck was that? I can't remember the name of these movies. That's where I'm getting too old for this. Um um but I think he could pull off Doctor Doom because he's got that European look to him. And then he can he's got this intensity about him that and and intelligence at the same time that you need for that character of Doctor Doom, you know? Because mm -hmm. he's got like this twisted sense of goodness, of righteousness, you know, and uh, but it's very self-centered in in a, in a certain way. Um, so that's why I think this guy would probably do a, a famous job portraying uh, Dr. Doom. I, I could see that. I definitely wouldn't want some young, cheeky looking guy to, to play the role. No. Mm. Yeah, I guess it is Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, that's the guy. Just finally got around, man. You don't know how freaking YouTube, uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> Google got me going everywhere. Now, he was also in uh, Rogue One, right? Didn't he play Jyn or something? Yeah, he was in that. Yep. Ryan says, Mads can't be used. Marvel tends not to uh, double cast their actors. I don't know because your boy Captain America was the human torch at first. That's correct. Yep. And your boy Deadpool wasn't Blade. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and Polar. he was a movie, movie guy, uh, y'all. If you huh? get a chance to watch that, Polar. Mm -hmm. If you have Netflix, pretty crazy, pretty good. Yeah, and you had a uh, your boy uh, before he was Green Lantern. He was on Blade, then he was on uh, X Men. Reynolds. Yeah, he was Deadpool in in uh, the Wolverine movie, not the good Deadpool, but that terrible Deadpool. Yeah, that was pretty bad. A terrible Deadpool that nobody liked. And then he was on Deadpool, Deadpool, which I think, dude, dude pulled it off, man. I can't even get mad at him. I can't even get mad at him. Overall, man, it's been like an amazing run, man. An amazing run. Oh, Lady Celtic Moon is in the house. She's saying hello. Hey, LCM. You know, and uh, so everybody's saying hi. Hello, is it me you're looking for? But yeah, um, I don't know. You know, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Speaking of. Of which, if Doom wasn't, I think uh, they're going to do a Namor. So that will be interesting. Oh, Namor. Okay. Yeah. You know. Well, they have, um, I think they, weren't they talking about, um, I think you mentioned him earlier, um, e, uh, Keanu Reeves. Mm -hmm. I thought they were talking about him doing that role. They have him speculated for a whole bunch of roles, and not not the least of which he Wolverine. <laughs> they want you know he does talk about him wanting to do Wolverine, being on the Eternals, doing Namor. There's a lot of you know, but like I said, well, Keanu Reeves he has minimal. He doesn't talk a lot. Of, even watch any of his movies, he he is talk less, act more. You know, and I don't mind it. I like it. It fits him, you know, but that's like the way Clint Eastwood was too. Go watch Dirty Hardy, Harry, the bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly. His, his, he has like his face. You say something, he'll be like, well, do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> that's it. You know, 
He doesn't go into a deep, you know, philosophical tirade. Oh yeah, Marvel Studios won't reuse Chris Evans as Johnny Storm in their version of Fantastic Four. Well, no, yeah. certainly not now. <laughs> well, now you got him as Captain America for the last 10 years. <laughs> He's definitely not the boyish Johnny Storm anymore. So there's that. Nah, but you know, Johnny Storm needs to be played by another Ryan Reynolds type character. Uh, I think. Well, yeah, you know, because he's he's another wisecracking character, you know, playing pranks on uh, the thing all the time. So, yeah, it needs to be somebody like him or uh, like RDJ. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, RDJ, that ain't happening anytime. Well, no, I mean, somebody like that, somebody who can pull yeah. that off. Yeah, I don't I don't know. You know, I think. um He's doing Dr. Uh, RDJ is doing Dr. Doolittle. I read yeah, I think remake. that's cool. <laughs> you know, that's a different, um, that's a different completely whole genre. That's like from being Iron Man to Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> I think that is, whoa, that's a jump. But he has that kind of uh, acting range. So, you know, I can't even, I can't even be mad. Yeah. Then again, you're never mad, so. Nah, you know, I, I get, I do get men here and there, but not, not very often. <laughs> not very often. Not very often, you know. Yeah. Nah, but seriously, man, you know, it, it, it's been interesting. It's been interesting, you know. You can, you gotta love life. You gotta keep it going. You know, and um, all that good stuff. All that bueno stuff. What she say? Let me see. RDJ has acting a lot of show fun, show hun. Yeah, he's been everywhere, you know. But to be honest, you know, my favorite, my favorite things he's done is Sherlock Holmes, and Iron Man. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I've seen him in other movies. I just like him in a certain, I don't know, in a certain aspect. Like I liked him as Sherlock Holmes. I thought he did wonderful in those movies. Let's see, they had to get rid of Chris Evans as he's the best but in MCU. That might also be why Holland was almost gotten rid of. His booty is better than Brie Larson's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like. I, I actually do like Tom Holland's Spider-Man, although a lot of people don't agree with me. I, I think. I think. Really? He's yeah. I like I, I, pretty spot on as far as. How he plays that character. I, I think so too. And but people for some reason people just don't like it. Some people don't like it. Uh, but I, I think um to be honest, I think I think he's the best Spider-Man portrayal that I've seen so far. Um like when he when they brought him in uh, in Civil War, I was so excited. I was like, finally, someone that that to me is Spider-Man, you know, the 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 comic book that I grew up reading. That looked like the Spider-Man to me. But, uh, you know, I digress. You know, it, it, everybody has taste. You know, some people, you know, I uh, like Tobey Maguire. I, I think he did a good job. But I just kind of like the vibe I get with Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Yeah, I, I like Tobey Maguire just fine. But I, I wouldn't have wanted to see the same portrayal again. Uh, Andrew Garfield, he's a great actor, you know. Um, but I just didn't enjoy... <laughs> his take or the director's take on on spider-man when he was doing it um but yeah I, I, we like tom holland just fine in our family he's younger you know the the character is younger than in the other movies a little bit let's see holland has the team spidey down pat and now he's 21 22 yep uh let it come to say do you any of you guys know how to put one of the desks that go up and down you talking about the desk itself, or you talking about like a tabletop? One of those ergonomic yeah. desks that let you yeah. stand up. Yeah, because I don't have a full desk. I have I just bought like a little um, ergo stand that I put on my regular desk, and then that one, I just pulled that one up. 
you know. Shoot, you just buy it on Amazon and put it on top of your desk. And that's it. Now, if you're trying to get a whole desk that goes up and down, those are really expensive because those have hydraulics and you got to plug them up on the wall. No. No, not all of them? No, there's some that you can just put on a flat desk. No, no, that's what I'm talking about. I, that's the one I have. Oh. I have, I have the one that you slap on the desk. Okay. Yeah, those are great. You know, and that's what I have. I have I have it on my at my workstation for my job job. I stand. I, I do standing for my job most of the time, because you know I can't be. You know, the doc said I can't be sitting for eight hours in a row no more. But uh, yeah, just put it on top of the desk. It's got two levers on the side. You pull it up. Da da ding, da da bang, done. It's, it's not that difficult. But if you're talking about building a whole desk, that the whole desk goes up and down. Now those are heavy, and and those are really, 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 really expensive. Yeah. But the one that I got is just slap it on the desk, like uh, Wapo said. Just put it on the desk, put your laptop on there. It's got two little flaps on the side, you psh, and it just whoop goes up. Oh, you bought it all already? Okay, so is it like a, a two pieces, one piece, a desk? Cause I'm confused. But basically. They, and those come pre-built. The ones that you slap on top of the desk, you just slap them on top. Just two pieces. All right. Yeah, the the uh, the ones that that you put on top of the desk, they usually come pre-built. You don't have to put them together. You just put it on top of the desk. And, and they are and they are heavy. Uh, that part I'm not gonna lie. Oh, the leg support. So you got like a hell. You got the desk desk. Yeah, that's a heavy like that, kind of that the whole desk, the whole tabletop goes up. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I, that's, that's right. a nice setup. Not really nice. No, I don't have one of those. Yeah. So you have the one that gets plugged into the wall with the with the button that it slides it up and down for you. Hopefully, you don't have one that you have to actually have to lift yourself. I would kind of suck. Yep. Top is separate and it's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to put that one together. You would have to get the instructions. <laughs> you would have to get instructions. But I'm assuming you just should be able to uh, put the legs together, put the legs up and slap the desk on and screw it in and call it a day. Because hmm? sometimes those slabs are just that. They're just slabs. You put the legs together and you just put the slab. No one to help. Yeah. Well, man, you're in Texas, man. It's way all the way over, you know. We on you in the middle. We in two different extremes. <laughs> like, you, got, <laughs> you got all those guys. Otherwise, we'd be right there to help you. And then you got us all the way in the West. Now, if I was close, I would charge you, you know, some water burger and it'd be done. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's my price. Water burger. Yeah, if you're doing that by yourself, that sucks because that those uh, slabs that go on top, usually you can just throw the slab on top. It's, it's not, you know, it's putting the legs and the hydraulics together. That's the big part. And then you just slap that, that wood on top or marble or whatever you got. <laughs> she had it for three weeks. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Um. Maybe um, what is it the, the things that they have a handyman for hire or husband for hire for the weekend where you where people um do do those little uh, knickknacks around the house? Then they have to have something like that. Handyman. Yeah, like handyman for hire. I'm sure they do. You know, maybe maybe you can find one in your area. That that has like a like a handyman for hire type deal thing, and maybe they can go, or maybe the company that bought it might have someone around the house. Who who'd you buy it from? If you bought it from Amazon, you might be. You might. No, even if you buy it from Amazon, I think they have an option where you can ask them to send someone to build, put the desk together for you. I think. Don't quote me on that, but I believe I was. 
traipsing around Amazon because I'm lazy about putting desks together. And and I say that, but there, I put three desks together because in, in my office room is three separate desks and I had to put them together and I hated it like with a passion, but I got it done. But not because I wanted to. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure there's got to be like some kind of service, like a handyman for hire or something like that. You know, if I, you can find some Marines, they'll do it for crayons. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to stop making that joke soon. Pretty soon. Well, no, you know, my, my son might be, uh, might be going that route. So. Five minutes of warning. Oh, yeah. Say, we're, <laughs> we've been going at it for a while. Heck, spent $2,000 for two guys to put shelves in the shipping container. That's a lot of money. Jeez. Man, I could have, for that kind of money, I could have flown to Texas, <laughs> put the shelves <laughs> in the container, <laughs> flown back, and you probably would have saved $1,000 or or at least seven, eight hundred bucks. <laughs> I'm just saying, it would have been cheaper to fly fly me in and get it done, <laughs> and more fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, easily more fun. Eight twenty five for wood and stuff. Jeez, Louise, that is crazy. That's a lot of money. See, this is when I'd be like, nope. See, I'm a guy that believes in paying for, for peace of mind and convenience, right? But that's way too much. That would give me stress. That would take away my peace of mind. And exactly. Convenience. You'd be sitting there going, why did I spend all that money? Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's insane. Insane. Man. But that you is... do you, bro. You do you. No, man. I wouldn't have paid $2,325 for that. Somebody did. Somebody did, but they, they had no choice. So see, see what, what Cesar fails to tell you, he would have did it himself. He wouldn't have been able to draw for two weeks. <laughs> 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 he would have been like, oh, my neck and my back. <laughs> or yeah, he might have been, help, I'm falling and I can't get up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you ain't lying. <laughs> it's at fifteen hundred dollars for labor. Jeez, that is crazy. Yeah, there's certain things I'd be like, "Yo, that labor is too much." Y'all, y'all are not doing that much. It's not that serious. That that is that is highway robbery. Highway robbery. It's all good. It's all good. That's what we're here for. We we allow people to vent. Talk, get things off the chest, you know. I'm up late. How is every one of them busy days? Yeah, I seen Chronos is doing a lot of big things on this channel, doing big things. But Chronos, you caught us in the last two minutes. I'm about to, I'm about to start outroing. But you know, drop a like before you leave, though. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. And uh, with that being said, trusty psychic. Let them know, man. Let them know who you are, where you at, where you can be found, what projects you're going to be working on, all that stuff. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Trusty Sidekick 3, on Instagram at Trusty Sidekick Art. Um, I'm always open for commissions, so please hit me up. Um, DMs are open. And um, after I finish this, I'll be back to work on a four page zombie apocalypse story written by Macho Dan. It's going to be fun. All righty, and let me get El Guapo. El Guapo, where's my mouse at? There you go, El Guapo Comics. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, this is El Guapo Comics, soon to be uh, grandpa for the second time. Um, and uh, you can catch me on Twitter at The Art of Cesar Feliciano, or Cesar Feliciano on Instagram at The Art of Cesar Feliciano, and on Facebook at The Art of Cesar Feliciano. Uh, Chango should be coming your way. Uh, 2020 early, like January, February at the latest. Hopefully, I have a diva. 
uh, and uh, Red 10 will be uh, to, at the printers. So that'll be fulfilling shortly. Uh, and then uh, you guys saw me working on a couple of panels from God to Soldiers. That is coming in 2020 as well. So look for that. The remastered edition. Awesome sauce. Let me find my mouse again. And of course, I'm Eortiz. You can find me at Colorbound underscore E on Twitter, Eortiz Arts on Facebook and Instagram. Eortiz here on YouTube, obviously, because y'all are here, you know, checking me out. And I'm not working on any particular projects in the moment in time. But if I do, I'll definitely let y'all know. Uh, but I want everybody, thank everybody for joining us, man. I appreciate you for taking your time out, hanging out with us, and my two gracious, uh, gracious co-hosts, uh, Trusty and Wapple, for always keeping me company. Hope everybody has a uh, good evening, a blessing, good night. Excelsior. Peace out, muchachos.